Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today's card is another take on fall with some copper foil paper that is stunning. But this week's card, unlike the one I did three weeks ago, is actually using the positive image of the leaflets framelits die. I'm going to add in the acorn builder punch with some burlap and textured background to give you that nice, warm, cozy fall feeling. Make sure you head over to my blog for all the cutting dimensions on today's card as well as a complete supply list. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started. Here's the card we're going to make today and I think you can really appreciate that beautiful foil shimmer and that deep embossing from that cable knit folder. Let's get started on putting this together. I began with a piece of crumb cake cardstock. This measures five and a half by eight and a half. As with all my videos, when I teach a project like this, all the dimensions and pictures are over on my blog. The address will be um, on the screen here at the end as it was in the beginning. This is where we're gonna do our embossing and this is the cable knit embossing folder. You're gonna see how thick this is compared to the regular embossing folder. Here's one of the exact same size, and when I hold them up this way, you can really appreciate the depth difference, at least twice the thickness. So I'm gonna slip this over the front of my card, and I'm gonna line up the edge of the embossing folder here on the seam. I've got my Big Shot, and I have the Big Shot platform. This is the new one that came out in June. Because of the depth of this embossing folder, you don't need to put a clear mat on the bottom like we typically would with the other folders. So you're just going to lay this here and then you're going to put a clear mat over the top, however, to protect it. So we're just going to take it apart and you're gonna see how beautiful that cable knit has embossed the front of this card. That's where the texture comes from. Now while we have the Big Shot out, now is the perfect time to go ahead and use the framelit that I'm gonna die cut for the front of this card. This comes from the Leaflets Framelits set, and I've chosen this one. So we've got our Big Shot again, and now this time I'm gonna to switch to the magnetic platform. I like the magnetic platform for framelits and thinlets because it's going to hold your paper in place. You are going to want to protect it, so you're going to put a clear mat on the bottom. And I'm going to take out my piece of copper foil paper, isn't that beautiful? And then we're going to set the framelit over the top. And then of course, just like we did with the embossing folder, you're going to want to cover it with another plate to protect it. I'm going to turn this on my stamp table and then I'm just going to crank this through and it's going to die cut that shape from the foil. I'm just going to disassemble this and you can see that it's cut from the back and all I'm going to do is I am going to gently push from the front of the paper to release it from the die. Now you would not want to use the Big Shot die brush on that because it would leave scratch marks all over the front of your foil. And so here is the negative portion. Now I'm not gonna waste this because I'm gonna use this on another card. And if you missed it, three weeks ago, I created a beautiful navy and green plaid card using this exact same negative piece. I'll put the link for that video right here on top of the screen in case you'd like to click on it and go back and watch that one as well. So here we have our copper leaf. I've cut several panels of paper to do the layering for this card. That just gives it the presentation. This is Cajun Craze. It measures two and a half by five. This piece is very vanilla, and this measures two and a quarter by four and three quarters. And then finally, the Petals and Paisleys designer series paper that measures two by four and a half. I'll use my snail adhesive and I'm just going to put adhesive on the back of the designer paper and I'm just going to begin to layer these panels together. So this one will go here and then adhesive on the back here and that one will go on top of the Cajun craze. This is going to get mounted here on the front of my card so I'm going to take some dimensionals and I'm gonna put one in each of the four corners. Because the panel is rather large, I wanna make sure that it's gonna hold up nicely through the mail, and again here on the sides, so that it doesn't warp as it goes through the mail meter. 
My mom is a recipient of most of my cards and she tells me we need more of those puffy things as she calls them because it was sagging when it got here. So I always take credence to her suggestions. And then I'm gonna mount this here in the front of the card. Here is that beautiful die cut foil leaf. That's gonna get mounted here to the card on the front as well. And I used several dimensionals to add it. I'm gonna put one down here at the bottom, another up here at the top, taking off that paper backing to reveal the other sticky side. And I'm just gonna kind of manipulate this so it hangs off just a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the Acorn Builder Punch. This is going to add some fall credence to this card. And I will be punching from scraps of designer paper from that same series, the Petals and Paisleys. This I'm going to use for the actual acorn. So I'm going to slide this in and I'm going to punch out my acorn. Same designer series paper. Isn't this foil polka dot just beautiful? You can see when I did my original card, I need just the top. So all I'm going to do is insert this into the paper and then punch. That's gonna fit perfectly over the top of this one. But I wanted some dimension, so I'm gonna add some dimensionals. I'm gonna bring you in a little closer so you can see better. I keep dimensional halves in my stamp studio all the time, and all I've done is literally taken a pair of scissors and cut them up the center just to get smaller pieces, and it works great for when you have to do um, some dimensional work on these smaller images. So I'm gonna add those to the back, and again, just taking off the paper backing, and then I'm gonna mimic this identically just by covering up the top. The beauty with the dimensionals is it's gonna really look um, more real with the cap on the top there. So we're gonna add this piece here next to the leaf. And I did that using a single dimensional here on the back. Lots of dimensionals, huh? I think that adds so much depth to a project. I really, really love them. I call them my cheap thrill because they're really inexpensive and add quite a bit to the project. This is a piece of the 5 8 inch burlap ribbon, and it's about 4 inches, and this is 3 inches of the natural gold ribbon. Now, you wouldn't think the gold and copper go together, but boy, is it pretty. So I'm going to start by making a knot in the middle of this, and before I pull it too tight, I'm going to slip this piece through that loop. And then I'm just going to pull. So now I've got the two pieces together. I liked the knot on the top. I just think it looks a little bit more rugged. Of course, either side is fine and you're gonna be able to see the ribbon regardless. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a haircut with my paper snips just so I have some clean edges. And then same with the ribbon, push that off to the side. And now I'm gonna use glue dots to attach this to the top of my card. And I think I'm actually gonna use two. This is a rather large knot and I wanna make sure it's gonna stay where I put it. So I'm gonna anchor that here near the top of my card. Pretty as it is, but I wanna add a sentiment. I'll use the Cajun Craze ink and the words thankful from the Acorny Thank You stamp set. The two coordinate beautifully together. And yes, this punch does punch out all these different acorns. Just a great buy and so much fun to use. So I've mounted my photopolymer words here, and I'm gonna stamp those on a piece of very vanilla cardstock. I'm gonna use my scissors and just cut the smaller to make it easier to cut out. And we are gonna fussy cut this. This is really easy. Just follow the curve of the stamp. You're not going to want to cut right on the color line. So let some of that paper peek through the edges. It's totally fine. It's gonna look really pretty when it's done. And it'll actually look really nice since we have a vanilla layer on the front of the card as well. And those half dimensionals, again, are gonna come in really handy for these small pieces. So I'm gonna add a couple to the back. I'm gonna remove that paper backing once again. And then I will add this to the bottom of my card here. 
really, really screams fall, I think. Here's the original card, and here's the one that we've made today. Head over to my blog and check out the Online Classes tab. You'll see that I have project PDF tutorials there for you, as well as stamps in the mail, where you can stamp with me from home. Everything is sent to you. In addition to that, don't forget to check out the information on Live with Lisa. This is a monthly private group of live demonstrations, prizes, and tutorials. I'd sure love to have you join me simply by placing a $35 product order in my online store. I'm so grateful that you are here and I hope you have a great day. See you next time.